give in hope before you give up your confidence so that you will never hope of getting your confidence back a very very good afternoon to all the dignitaries and the attendees i feel privileged to extend my warm welcome to all presented here this is your host nazish khan and would like to welcome you all with great immense and joy back to yet another session that has been organized by teams welfare fund i hope you all are doing amazing i see quite number of people joining with us before i proceed let me take a brief moment for introduction of my organization seems welfare foundation is a non profit entity established to work in the areas of education social welfare women empowerment skill development entrepreneurship and livelihood generation etc seems group has conducted various international conferences seminars workshops and webinars in emerging technology in various parts of india and has active network of 3000 plus engineers managers researchers etc digi saksham is also another initiative of seems group and has also conducted more than 100 webinars 10 fdps and workshops and six international conferences as i proceed further i would like to introduce the topic for today's webinar that is electrical energy saving opportunities for future generation which shall be presented by lavnish talwar sir the electric energy is the energy generated by movement of electrons from one point to another today through this webinar we came to know the measures to save electric energy for further use i am profoundly ecstatic to have a guest speaker mr lavnish talwar sir joining us today he worked as head of department in department of electric engineering at ycet he has published 29 research papers in national and international journals having a good impact factor and attended more than 50 international conferences the world is full of diamond engines and we are having one of them here today to build this event with this note i would like to give my heartiest welcome to a guest speaker lavnish talwar sir with a big round of applause Thank you so much. Uh, also, I would like to thank my uh, sincere gratitude and uh, thanks to the Sims India organization uh, under the banner. There are many and many engineers are to be there. We have conducted so many webinars and international conferences, like we uh, have already told. So this webinar uh, will be the line cue of that also upcoming session that we have conducted. So before presenting um, today's webinar, first of all, again I would like to thank all the participating team to be there at the point. Uh, before starting this webinar, again I would like to thank all the entire teams of Sense on Leadership Foundation that gave me the opportunity to deliver my talk on this burning topic that is an energy conservation opportunities for the future generation. I hope heartily welcome all the participants to be there. and hope so at the end of this session you all quite benefited that how you can conserve your energy especially the electrical energy uh, that is a two days the booming uh, thing that we all to have to save this energy so not much wasting your time uh, let me share my screen so uh, the today topic is uh, energy conservation opportunities for the future generation and as uh, ma'am has already introduced me so myself uh, engineer lavnish talwar and presently i am working as head of the department in yogananda college of engineering and technology jammu jammu and kashmir uh, i had done my mtech in the field of energy management from shri mata vishnu devi university and uh, after doing mtech uh, i had published uh, many papers in the field of energy conservation and in each and every paper and in in, in every webinar that i delivered the talk i am focusing towards Uh, the opportunities how we can save the energy for our future generation the reason be now the time will come uh, when we have to save the energy for the future generation if you uh, go back about 5 uh, to 10 years there is a scenario that the generation of electricity is very very high but uh, their consumption of electricity is low but now the scenario will change and in the future coming days this scenario is totally changed and we are Uh, the generation rate of energy is low and the consumption rate of energy is very very high so it is the high time that we all have to save the energy 
so that our future generation can get this energy get benefit of this energy so in this uh, webinar uh, i will tell you about that what are the various energy conservation techniques or you can say that what are the various energy opportunities that we all are adopted so we can conserve the energy and we also take to pledge that we have to save the energy the reason being uh, if we not save this energy and if we consume the energy the day will come when we have no energy and in that case we are totally exhausted our limited sources like conventional sources of energy and we have to divert now from conventional sources to the non conventional sources of energy so uh, in the briefing about this webinar here i will discuss with you one one thing with you all the participants should be present there i am discussing with you people a uh, one case study and you can see that in this case study that uh, earlier uh, normal conventional sources are adopted and when we replace the conventional sources with the non conventional sources of energy we can save the energy but there is a problem that when we have to uh, convert your conventional sources of energy to the non conventional sources of energy or even we can say that when we have to divert it from your non energy saving equipment to energy saving equipment there is some capital requirement there is some initial environment is required but if you have not any constraint regarding to the initial investment then we have go for this type of uh, energy source but if you have uh, financial constraint to be there then we have also another measures and also another uh, you can say that things from by which you can save the energy so uh, before proceeding towards our uh, uh, webinar first of all i quote uh, with the one uh, quote of our missile man of our india dr professor uh, abdul kalam ji and according to him life and time are the world best teachers life teaches us how to make good use of time and time teaches us how much the value of life so with these uh, inspiration words with these motivational words i will start the today's webinar so uh, before starting towards this webinar uh, first of all as you all know there are two type of sources to be available one is called as the conventional sources of energy and another is called as the non conventional sources of energy in earlier days uh, these conventional sources of energy were also called as a renewable non renewable sources of energy and the non conventional sources of energy are also called as the renewable sources of energy as i had already tell you that if you go 5 uh, years or 10 years back we are all dependent upon your conventional sources of energy but now the time will come when we have to divert from conventional sources of energy towards the non conventional sources of energy only simple thing is that we have to save the energy because if we save the energy we can uh, give that energy to our future generation otherwise our future generation has no source of energy no limited source of energy so that you cannot think to be possible so this slide is basically representing about uh, the difference between the conventional sources of energy and the non conventional sources of energy and you can see that point number 1 that the conventional sources of energy are not abundant present in limited quantity whereas the non conventional sources of energy are abundant in nature only thing is that means we have to get aware the people we have to get aware the uh, locals that you have to extract the energy the conventional sources of energy has been used for a very long time but the non conventional sources of energy the research and development processes will goes on and we have to extract that energy so uh, these are the certain points that uh, difference between the conventional sources and the non conventional energy sources and i know all of you get be aware from these difference so i'm not taking these thing in a very broad way so here we have the some sources uh, for uh, conventional as well as the non conventional sources like you can see on the left hand side we have uh, renewable sources of energy and these renewable sources of energy are also called as the non conventional sources of energy and uh, some examples are we have solar energy biomass energy wind energy geothermal hydropower and on the extreme right hand side we have non renewable sources of energy which is also called as the conventional sources of energy and the various examples are fossil fuel the coal the nuclear and uh, the natural gas which are nowadays get abundant uh, here there are certain more examples related to renewable as well as non renewable sources of energy like we have wind geothermal solar hydropower biomass these all get under the category of non conventional sources of energy or 
uh, renewable sources of energy. And on the right hand, we have coal, oil, natural gas, and nuclear. These are basically the non renewable sources of energy or the conventional sources of energy. Now, here the time will come when we have to get this quote that energy is not the idea, it is an execution. Now, we have to execute it so that we can save the energy. So, uh, an attempt has been made in this webinar to reveal the role of energy majors adopted for the conservation of energy in domestic sector in order to conserve the energy. I will try my best. You can give a live, uh, you can say that uh, I will give you the case study. You can get an idea that how we can save the energy. According to the energy managers, there is an important term. You can say that we have energy consumption or demand generally refers to the term energy management, which means saving of energy. This talk is a concise report in the field of energy management in the domestic sector and acts as an important tool for the technical persons in providing insight into the field of energy conservation and energy management. So uh, by adopting simple measures and energy conservation techniques, uh, we can help in saving the wastage of energy and the raw material that we use in our domestic sector. Uh, before proceeding towards, uh, we have the important law of energy that energy can neither be created nor be destroyed. Yeah, it can be transferred from one form to the another form. As I am talking about the electrical energy and you all know about the electrical energy, let us take an example of hydroelectric power station and you all know in case of hydroelectric power station what will happen. The first of all, the potential energy of the stored water is converted into the kinetic energy. After that, uh, this kinetic energy will be converted into the mechanical energy and uh, when uh, the water will be striking the turbines, this mechanical energy is ultimately converted into the, you can say that the rotational energy and after that, this turbines will be coupled with an alternator and the mechanical energy is ultimately converted into the electrical energy. So, according to the basic concept that energy can neither be created nor be destroyed, Based upon that thing, we can start. As I have already told you that the energy conservation is the practice of decreasing the quantity of energy used while achieving the similar output at the end of the use. So on a larger scale, energy conservation is an element of energy policy. And uh, it should be seen that a uh, one unit of electricity saved is equal to 3.4 or 3 to 4 units of electricity generated. Now, here is the one of the most important points that we all must be considered to be there, that the cheap and substandard gadgets that consume more power as compared to the expensive standard gadgets, and it is to be proven costlier on a longer run. Here, uh, one thing that I will tell you all the people that instead of uh, cheap and substandard gadgets, if you use a standard gadgets, and these gadgets, no doubt, initial investment is high, but on a larger scale, on a longer scale, it is seen that it will be proven uh, more, uh, you can say that, uh, cheap as compared to your uh, cheap and substandard gadgets. Because in energy management terms, we are focusing towards one important term that is called as the payback period. Uh, so here the question comes, when, when whenever we have to install certain equipment or certain gadget, that gadget or certain equipment, if we use a cheap or substandard, initial investment is low, but on a long, longer run, it proves to be a costlier. So your considerations will be given for energy saving that instead of using a cheap or substandard gadgets, you are using uh, standardized gadgets so that it to be proven cheap for a longer run. And uh, here it is also seen that consideration should be given to the life cycle cost rather than the capital cost while purchasing any gadget. Because it should be kept in mind that electricity saved is basically the money saved. Now, uh, you can see this pie chart here. This pie chart you can see in our Indian domestic sector, the consumption of electrical energy. You can see that uh, most of the time, uh, our 55% of energy consumption is always and always on the appliances that we are used. 24% of electricity consumed on space heating. 12% is on for lightning purpose, whereas 5% is for water heating and 4% for cooking. So our main area of thirst or the main area for the energy conservation is the appliances that we all using to conserve the energy. And here it should be seen that 
if you use a cheap or substandard gadgets if you use a cheap or substandard appliances they are proven to be more costlier in a longer run so that is the important thing that you have to choose uh, the correct electrical equipment the energy efficient equipment so that you can save the energy this is the potential of renewable power in, in india and uh, from this slide you can see that there is a wide wide potential of renewable power in india only thing is that thing we have to get uh, the people aware we have to get the people r and d's so that we can extract the energy in the form of renewable sources of energy so in india there are many states like uh, you have seen the maharashtra the karnataka the gujarat the andhra pradesh where we have the potential only thing we have to extract the energy so uh, energy conservation is an effort to make to reduce the consumption of energy by using less of energy services this can be achieved either by using energy more efficiently or by reducing the amount of service used the various principles involved in energy conservation are optimal control optimize capacity optimize load use efficient processes reduce losses energy containment examine energy conservation opportunities and energy storage facilities so in this webinar i will try to tell you that we have the two way channel to save our energy one way you have to replace your existing sources with energy efficient sources so when you replace your existing sources with energy efficient sources the only thing is that you required initial investment you required some monetary things to be there if you have initial investment to be there if you have capital to be there you are go with that energy conservation opportunities here you can convert or you can replace your non energy efficient devices with energy efficient devices but if you have a barrier of uh, your monetary you have a barrier for your initial investment then you can adopt simple energy conservation measures and you can see that by adopting simple energy conservation measures you can also save the energy so choice is your either you should go to conserve the energy by replacing existing sources with the energy efficient sources or by simply you can adopt it simple energy measures to conserve the energy both the methods have their own pros and cons but the thing is that only the main thing is initial investment capital investment so if if you have don't barrier if you have a don't, uh, th don't if you don't think that you have a monetary things to be there you can go to replace your energy non energy efficient sources with energy efficient sources but if you have a barrier related to the initial investment required then you can adopt the simple energy conservation measures and you can save the energy now here i will discuss with you people one case study that uh, after watching this case study or after revealing this case study you can see that how much energy we can save now in this case study what i have done i have done various energy conservation opportunities first of all uh, for doing any case study for doing any uh, energy audit we have to site inspection to be there we have to implement it to be there we have to make the pre final report to be there and after that we can suggest some measures to conserve the energy by replacing your non energy efficient energy efficient sources and after that you can see that uh, 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 there are uh, many much things to be there uh, we can save the energy and uh, from there you can see that uh, first of all uh, the area for the chosen of energy conservation is basically a uh, one grid station which is installed at our jammu province and it is basically a 220 by 132 by 33 kv burn grid station which is about 25 kilometers away from jammu this is the brief introduction about the area where i have done my energy audit and after the energy audit i submitted my report to the officials of that grid station and where i have tell that that you have to uh, adopting these simple measures and by adopting these simple measures you can save the energy the grid station has a capacity to supply 320 mva power to the jammu province and uh, it is basically a step down station where it can receive the power at about 220 kv and after that it can be step down to 132 kv and further transmitted to the various grid stations 
this is the switchyard of that grid station where I have performed the energy audit. And this is the control room where actually I have done the energy audit. Now, in this audit, what I have done, there is a one control room and uh, 12 residential quarters to be there. Having 51 incandescent lamps, each having wattage 100 watt. This is the first load. 48 FTLs having 55 wattage, 63 high pressure mercury vapor lamps and 11 computers having wattage 40 watt. So this is the actual load that is installed in that grid station. And I had performed the energy audit on these four things to be there. That is, I had gone to the energy audit with 51 incandescent lamp, 48 fluorescent tube lamp lamps, 63 high pressure mercury vapor lamps and 11 computers and by adopting simple energy measures we can say we can save the energy and in the coming slide you can see that how much energy you can save so what suggestions i have to be given there that first of all you can replace the incandescent lamp with compact fluorescent lamp that is cfl i know nowadays uh, there is no cfl to be there nowadays we are all using leds or lcds to be there but this audit i had done before uh, some time before the covid time and there we can use in condensate lamp because at that time there is not awareness of any energy conservation opportunities to be there so when i submit my report that you can uh, replace your in condensate lamp with compact fluorescent lamp you can save the energy in the same case uh, what i suggest i suggest you can replace your 40 watt t12 ftls with 15 watt magnetic glass with 36 watt T8 FTLs with 4 watt electronic glass, you can save energy. I can also propose that you can replace your high pressure mercury vapor lamp with high pressure sodium vapor lamp. And also, uh, I can propose that you can replace your existing monitors, that is LCD monitors with LED monitors, and you can save the energy. So, when you uh, do these things and you have submitted the report, so it can be seen that the first major has a very small investment required. And in this case, the payback period is one month only. That is after one month, what you have invest, you can get it back. Second one has a small initial investment. But again, here the payback period is less than one year. That is whatever you have to spend in your initial investment by replacing your FTLs, 36 watt with another FTLs. You are, you are required the initial investment, but here the payback period is less than one year. The third one is also required a very high uh, bit of investment, but again, the payback period is of one year. And lastly, uh, when you replace your LCD monitors with LED monitors, you can see you can save the energy and the payback period is here about three years. So here is the calculation part. Uh, I will cover only the one part of the time constraint to be there and on the same pattern, all the uh, things to be all the uh, energy conservation measures to be seen and you can see that we can save the energy so what i have proposed uh, there are initially there are 51 incandescent lamps that are installed in grid station so the installed wattage will be since one lamp has a wattage of 100 watt so there are 51 lamps so the total installed wattage will be 5.10 kw I can propose you can replace your uh, incandescent lamp with CFL lamps and uh, the number will be reduced to 20. The reason being the illumination uh, for 51 incandescent lamp is exactly the same the illumination for 20 uh, CFLs. So here you can see that you can replace your 100 watt 51 incandescent lamp with 20 watt 51 CFLs you can, uh, wattage will be 1.02 kW and you can see, you can uh, reduce the installation watt about 4.08 kW. And when you see that uh, annual saving for 365 days of operation and uh, 10 hours in a day and uh, one unit of electricity consumed is about 4.4 .4 rupee, you can see that at the end of the day, at the end of the year, uh, the annual bill will becomes about about 60000 rupees so here the payback period will be 38 days that is less than one year and you can see from this chart when this that grid station it can use 51 incandescent lamp the total energy consumption in that grid station only and only due to incandescent lamp is almost 18615 kwh but 
when you replace this 51 incandescent lamp having wattage 100 watt with 50 CFLs having wattage 20 watt, you can consume the electrical energy that is 3723, almost six times, almost six times. That means only replacement of incandescent lamp with CFLs, you can save the energy to a very, very greater extent. And you can see here, and all the calculation parts are to be there, that how you can get this exact value. So this is the first energy conservation measure uh, where you can save the energy. So from this graph, I think you all must be clear that if that grid station or if that plants is uh, consuming the power by using 51 in condensant lamp, the energy consumption will be about 18,615. But only you can replace this in condensant lamp with CFL, you can save the energy to a very, very great extent. So this is the ECM number one. In the same case, uh, when you go for the ECM number two, and in this ECM number two, you can replace 40 watt T12 FTL having 50 watt magnetic blast with an only 36 watt T8 having 4 watt electronic blast. Same calculation will be done on the earlier portion. And you can see that how much you can save the energy. Earlier, the energy consumption will be about 9636, touching towards 10,000. But when you replace your non-energy efficient devices with energy efficient devices, you can consume about 20, uh, 2,628. And it is almost about five times. So if you go for ECM number two by adopting these things, you can save energy up to five times. So when you combine this, you can see that what you have to do, you have to replace your energy efficient devices with non-energy efficient devices or non-energy efficient devices with energy efficient devices, you can save energy. In the same case, uh, when you go for ECM number three, and you can see in the ECM number three, what I have do, I have replaced the high pressure mercury vapor lamp with sodium vapor lamp. The same calculation will be done. And on the last, you can see this much amount of power or this much amount of energy we can consume. Earlier, that station can uh, use outdoor lighting by using sodium vapor, sorry, mercury vapor lamp. And in that case, it consumed almost about 60,000 kWh of energy. But if you have to replace with sodium vapor lamp, you can see that we can consume about 28,743. And it was almost, it's a double. So, Again, here, again, I will tell you that by adopting this energy major, you can save the energy. So you can see that uh, by adopting only these simple energy majors, we can save the energy. And this is the high time that, that we have to replace your existing sources with energy efficient sources. And we have to save the energy because if you not uh, replace your non-energy efficient sources with energy efficient sources, the consumption demand of electric energy is so high, so high that in future generation, we don't have energy. The reason being the generation rate of energy is limited, but the consumption rate of energy is day by day, day by day, day by day increasing. In the similar way, if you go for the ECM number four and quickly, if I see uh, this much amount of, uh, you can say that energy uh, consumed earlier when we use 11 uh, liquid crystal display that is LCD display monitors and uh, if you replace this LCD uh, monitors with LED monitors you can see that you can save the energy. So this is not any data that I have copied from uh, one or another side from the Google or anything search engine. This is the actual dot audit I had done in that grid station and after that when I submit this report to the officials of that grid station uh, they welcome that report and uh, they can replace these things and uh, become energy efficient so on the same platter waveform we can also save energy to a very very greater extent I had also done various energy audits in various industries uh, where we have to propose that you can replace your non-energy efficient motors with energy efficient motors. You can replace your non-energy uh, efficient pumps with energy efficient pumps, energy efficiency in boilers. So by adopting these simple measures, we can conserve the energy. But again, I am repeating here one thing again that 
all this replacement you required some initial investment so if you have an initial investment you can go through this type of energy audit you can go this type of energy conservation opportunities but if you have a barrier of initial investment initial capital investment then this thing become uh, not possible or this thing becomes very difficult so in another word if you have to save that energy not replacing your non energy efficient devices with energy efficient devices so you have to adopt simple measures so in the coming slide i will tell you that how you can also save the energy not replace your non existing uh, non energy efficient sources with energy efficient sources so uh, after the combining all these ecms you can see that when you have to go your ecm number 1 ecm number 1 have save energy up to 11% ecm number 2 save the energy up to uh, 21% uh, sorry ha yeah, 21% ECM three save energy up to four percent and majority ECM four save energy up to sixty four percent. So it is a simple. You can say that you can adopt it. The simple major you can just quick start and you can save the energy. So if we take a pledge, everybody that we have to save the energy so that our future generation can get the energy. So uh, these are basically uh, the ECM techniques where you can save the energy. But again, I am repeating many times now. Again, lastly, I am repeating that only thing is that you required initial investment. But if the initial investment is a barrier, then you should go for the second adoption. And in the second adoption, you not have to uh, replace your non energy efficient devices with energy efficient devices only thing is that thing you have to adopt simple measures you have to adopt simple tips to save the energy in domestic sector i can cover some of the points but it is not possible for me to each and every point to be covered there that how you can save the energy uh, by adopting the simple measures so i will give you only the few things to be there how you can save the energy so in domestic sector you all see we are all using the lightening system so uh, only best practice is that to save the energy that turn off the light when not required so this is a simple thing when whenever you required uh, electrical energy whenever you required lightening you can turn on otherwise you can turn off so by simple you can turn off the switch turn, turn off the switch of the light when you not required you can save energy in the same case you can see that Uh, many automatic devices can help in saving the energy used in lightning uh, one one of the most important thing to be there here the point number 4 that the dirty tube lights and the bulbs reflect less light and can absorb 50% of the light dust your tube lights and ramp regularly so here if you go for this point you doesn't need require any capital you doesn't need required any uh, replacement of your existing sources with energy efficient sources only thing is that thing maintenance is required you can uh, clean your tube lights you can clean your lamps you can clean your lamp shades so that the illumination is get adequate to the working place so by adopting these simple measures we can think we can save the energy to the greater extent these are the certain tips that we can all use in case of room air conditioners where we can save the energy to a greater extent so one thing that uh, i will tell you all people that i know you all people can know that thing but it is a simple thing uh, whenever we can use a room air conditioner there should be proper sealing of the window panes as well as the door panes otherwise what will happen uh, the air to be leaked through that window panes and the door so in that case what will happen your compressor of the air room air conditioner get uh, more work it out and it will when it get to more work it out it can consume more of the more energy so simply you can seal all the window panes as well as the door panes so that there is no leakage to be there and once there is no leakage to be there you can save the energy the reason mean at that time your thermo your uh, compressor have to work efficiently so when the compressor have to work uh, efficiently it can consume less power as compared to when the leakage to be uh, there so uh, by adopting these simple techniques you can see that you can save the energy to a greater extent and here is also seen that 
in all the air conditioner there are you can see that air filter stop to be there so what will happen uh, when the dust particles and all the dust things to be decomposed on this air filters then the flow of the air get reduced and in that case your fan has to be operate more and more and also your compressor has to be work more and more so in order to get more efficiency of your fan or a blower or a uh, you can say that the compressor regularly clean the filters the filters should not be choked out so when you cleaned your filter the flow of uh, air is will be very very fine and you can save the energy to get reaction because in that case the compressor has not to be work alone so by adopting these simple measures you can also conserve the energy also uh, there are certain important tips to be there for the case of the refrigeration and uh, here you can see that when you open the door of the refrigerator very frequently then the again uh, the cooling of the refrigerator will get dozed on and in that case the compressor has to be work it out so make it an habit when we are required you can open the door in our household appliances we can see that uh, whenever uh, was, uh, we can see that frequently opening of the door will affect the efficiency of the refrigerator and anyhow it will uh, uh, effectively the compressor's efficiency and moreover it will be directly linked to the energy so if you frequently open the door of the refrigerator you can see the compressor has to be work very hard and in that case it consumes more energy as compared to uh, the normal opening so here there are certain important things that uh, you should must all follow to save the energy uh, here it will be seen that allow hot and warm foods to cool cover them before putting them into the refrigerator refrigerator will use less energy and condensation will be reduced what will be happen uh, we have a practice that uh, the hot as well as the warm food get put inside the refrigerator so in order to take the temperature beyond that thing the efficient uh, the compressor has to be work very very uh, efficiently so it will consume more power so only thing is that thing before put any material to the refrigerator first of all cool down at a room temperature when the food stuff or a material will get at a room temperature after that you can put that food stuff or a material into the refrigerator so that the compressor does not has to work hard and it will consume not very much amount of energy so uh, again there are certain points to be there uh, by adopting these points you can save the energy to a very very great extent in the same case we have a microwave ovens and electric kettles now here i will tell you one important point to be there i must know that all of you follow this point but as a energy manager it's our duty that uh, i will be get aware you people with this one most important point no what will be happen nowadays all we can see that in today generation all are working uh in the morning the husband and the wife are working their their children are to be going to the school so what will happen uh, the lady uh, wake up in the morning and uh, make the food stuff material and after that it will make make this food stuff material and put on the refrigerator and go to their workplace in the evening when the husband and the wife will come back to the home after uh, performing his duties in the office and moreover the children are also coming back to the home after performing his school duties what will happen we can take that food material stuff into directly put into the microwave oven so what will be happen the temperature the food stuff which is present inside the uh, refrigerator having a temperature of about 5 degree to 7 degree and we require to eat that food stuff up to the temperature of 50 to 60 degree centigrade so what will happen when we put that food stuff directly from the refrigerator to the microwave oven the microwave oven has to perform more so in that case it can uh, take a lot of electrical energy so again there is a wastage of energy so how you can get rid of it that thing first of all when you put that food stuff into the microwave oven let them to be cool down or let them to be open it on a room temperature so that the food stuff which is present in the refrigerator having a temperature of 5 degree to 7 degree and before putting to the microwave oven it will be attain certain temperature about say 20 degree or 25 degree and after that you can put that food stuff into the microwave oven so it will take less amount of electrical energy to get warm it out 
so this is the simple step here you have to not replace any energy non energy efficient microwave oven with energy efficient microwave oven only thing is that thing just a simple idea just a simple thing that before putting any material directly from the refrigerator to the microwave oven put some time to be there in the room temperature so that it can attain a certain temperature and after that you can put inside into the uh, oven and it can be hot so by adopting this thing you can uh, uh, use uh, you can consume uh, less energy and you can save energy in the same case electric heaters all of all all we are using nowadays we are using the electrical kettles we know that most of the most of the time we are using thermostat based electrical kettles where what will be happen when the temperature of the water is reaches up to 100 degree centigrade when the water will be boil automatically it will cut it down so when it will be cut it down you can save the energy but if you use the electric kettles without thermostat so what will happen the kettles will consume more and more energy and here it will what will happen it will consume more and more energy and uh, this is the basic the wastage of energy so here you can uh, replace this amount of energy one also important tip i must be shared with all you people that in order to get heat the water instead of refrigerator cold water you can use normal water to boil it out because if you use uh, refrigerate water the temperature of the refrigerated water is about 1 to 2 degree and it will take a lot of time to get it 100 degree centigrade temperature so it will consume more and more energy so what will happen you can uh, consume more energy so how to get it right out of it before putting the water refrigerate water into the kettle put some time for a outside so that it can attain a temperature about say 10 degree or a 20 degree or 15 degree so after that you can put that water into the kettle it will take less amount of energy to boil it out so these are the simple measures by using of which you can save the energy to a greater extent so i try to attempt that uh, by adopting these simple measures you can save the energy in the same case there are certain tips that are required for the computers uh, i have published various articles in the local newspapers and this is one of my article that are published in newspaper on 9th november 2020 where the save energy save world for future generation that is a two days demand this is the one more uh, you can say that article published that world is changing from conventional sources of energy to the non conventional sources of energy the reason being as energy managers it's our duty that we should get aware the people so that we can save the energy to a greater extent so that our future generation can get energy so at the last uh, i will conclude my today's talk that energy conservation is the practice of decreasing the quantity of energy used while achieving a similar output at the end of the usage on a larger scale energy conservation is an element of energy policy so this is the tagline of all the energy managers we have that save energy save world for our future generation so with this uh, when i start my presentation i will give my quote to our missile man of india and when i conclude my presentation uh, i will also give you one quote that life is like an ice cream enjoy it before melts i think i i i know that this is not related some energy conservation it is generally the life that life is like an ice cream enjoy it before melts i enjoy my life with my family my wife and my small kid so i request all the participants all the to be present to be there you can also enjoy your life because life has a very short span of time so enjoy your life of every moment before it melts so thank you thank you so much for this uh, webinar thank you so much sir it was really a very amazing webinar i would like to propose heartily vot of thanks to you sir for gracing today's webinar your presence and wise word help magnifying our course in best positive ways i hope all participants learn a lot with this webinar i would really like to thank you sir for giving us your valuable time and i am delighted to be the part of today's webinar thank you so much thank you so much before leaving this platform i would hot heartily thanks to the entire teams of sems india foundation that give me the opportunity to deliver some ideas about energy conservation especially thanks to the management committee the organizing committee and also special thanks to nazish khan ma'am who beautifully host this program thank you so much a good event never ends in the world they take only a pause and keep us awaiting for the next
all good things eventually ends i consider everyone as fortunate that they became part of this webinar which was full of knowledge which makes difficult to say goodbye thank you so much for cooperating again thank you for all the attending today's webinar and if you have additional question you can contact us by email or telephone number we are happy to provide additional support to you the end of one chapter is the beginning of next keep on reading the best is yet to come i nazish khan your host of the day signing off on a cheerful note have a wonderful day thank you thank you so much thank you so much to all the participants who listen my webinar very patiently thank you so much thank you so much once again thank you